Hey guys, this is Forsaken Reality here with the seventh episode of the Arabici tutorial series. In this episode, we will be working on setting up a data table and rearranging our structures so we can have some better organization before we start on the combat system and make too much of a mess to clean up. So without further ado, let's start on setting up the item data table. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our RPG tutorial folder, blueprints, data, structures. We're going to want to open up this one because we're going to move a few things out of here. Okay, we're going to create a few new structures to store things separately and more organized. So. One structure will be called ST Animation Details. One will be called ST underscore Socket Details. And one more will be called ST underscore damage details. So these three will store uh, the animation damage and socket details. And this will store for now the, de the rest of the default variables and also these three. So first we'll open up the animation structure and we'll want to set this to an animation montage. search montage and a montage I make it an array and create another one and two more we'll set these back to a single variable so there's two single variables and two arrays the first one will be melee light attacks because we're going to have light and heavy attacks, so you can combo between different attacks. And it's going to be a, I'm going to set up a three combination system, combo system, but you will be able to extend it. And I'll show you how to do that in, a, in the video as well. So you'll be able to have four and five combos if you really wanted. You'll be able to combo between melee light attacks and melee heavy attacks. And then equip, equip animation, and unequip animation. So now we're storing these animations in a structure, or these variables in a structure, which we use for those specific things. And we'll, go to the, we'll do the damage details. These are all going to be floats for now. Um, under, we're gonna do min da min damage. Yep. Wait, three more max damage, and then critical hit chance. It's gonna write critical forward and critical hit multiplier so this will be the chance of hitting a critical hit and this will be how, how much it multiplies your hit by to get the critical once we set it up of course and now we'll open up the socket details and we already have these in a couple of them, in, a few of them in here. I'm going to set up a few extra ones since these are ones that I'm eventually going to use. And these are all going to be named. And it's going to be the hand socket. Score R for the right hand. And socket underscore. L for the left hand for shields and offhand weapons. 
back socket underscore iron. So we'll have like a sword, for example, or two swords or a sword and shield back socket underscore L. And then in case you have some daggers or something, waist socket underscore R waist socket underscore L. And these sockets also need to be exist on your skeleton for the work. But we'll set those up. We already have a few of them set up, but I'll set them up for the data table once we get there. Okay, so that's these three set up and we can remove the uh three sockets in here. I don't think they're actually even in use yet. It's gonna test. Yeah, they're not even in use yet. Um, okay, now that we have that done, we'll want to go back to our blueprints, data, structures, and open up our item detail structure and create three new variables. And we're gonna call the ST animations details. And if you notice, I call it animation details. And if you notice down here now, it's in a in its own little category for all the animations and a drop down makes it a little more organized instead of them all just, this just being open like this all the time. Um, it'll be a little more organized once you're in the data, when you have it set up in a data table, I, I think at least. Um, now we'll put the socket details. I'll put these above the animations. And we'll call ST socket details. And damage details. SD damage. Save that. Now we have it. All these nicely organized here. So now they're empty, of course. So now we want to, now that we have the details set up, we'll want to set up a data table. So to do that, we want to go into, I created a data tables folder, I think in a previous video, but in here in our data, you want to create a data tables folder. And in here, go to miscellaneous, I believe, yes. And click data table. And we want to search for our item details. And then there's, the, I don't know why two show up, but I just search to select the first one. And this will be DT and those are item lists. We'll store all of our item details. So now instead of putting everything in the each item's blueprint that we create, we can now add a new item here. And first we'll set it up or add a new item. I will go to my blueprints, items, holdable, and my BB master holdable. Okay, we have our item details variable here that that's our st item details this structure right here don't should and uh so now we want to go into our construction script so we can set the info whatever we put in so so we have our new item this will be a sword for example we put we have the name description the type the item mesh the stands, holdable, or animations, etc., will all be fed from this data table to the structure. So we don't need to fill it out in here. We can fill out all our items in here instead. Make it a little easier. And have them all in one place. Okay, so first we want to right-click. So while we're doing this on our construction script, is because this will run before begin play. So as the item's constructed, the blueprint. So we want to get data table row. 
and we're going to select our item data table. We're going to promote this to a variable. This is going to be our item ID. And our item ID is our, we'll just put a tooltip, which is our row name in the item list. So the row name is basically this right here. So up in underscore forward one that when you create a new item that that's the ID. So you call this when you want to get all the data for this specific item or this specific item, for example. So the only thing in each blueprint we'll need to fill out now is the row name. For example, so we have our sword. You don't need to fill this out anymore. That'll be auto filled from the data table for every other this item and every other item. So this, we can clear it if we really want to. And uh, for the item ID, all you need to do for this is weapon underscore sword one just as what I wrote here and that and bec that will get the data for that item ID and speed it in through here you want to right click here or you want to set the item details first so we're setting the info for the item found the sword, for example, to whatever we found here to our item details. So that's that. I'll just comment this so we don't forget what it does. Set data determined. By the info written in the et underscore item list. Um, item ID in each item EP will determine the row used for the items details. Hopefully that's descriptive enough. Turn off the show bubble because I don't like seeing this. Especially when there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, now I want to set the static mesh. So we don't have to go in here and set the static mesh every single time for our source. So we can actually remove this just so we can test. Actually, I'll make that there for just right this moment. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna remove that from the holdable mesh, the sword. You don't need to, but I do. It'll still set the mesh to whatever is in the data table, for example, is what I mean. So you wanna set the static mesh of the holdable item to end the new mesh will be whatever is fed from this item, for example, for example, you pick up this one, it will see the mesh that's put in here, which we'll put the sword in, just so it feeds it. And that's the mesh that will appear. So you want to go out and break your ST item details. So then you have your item details, and it's been set to that item. And you want to plug the item mesh in here. And that will set the up. Items mesh to the item in your data table. So that should be it for the data table. We'll just quickly test it out to show that it's working. I remove, so I pick up the item, the item's in my hand. And I don't have the mesh set here. It's being set in the construct script. Let's just go check our character. Because I know there's some things we can set up in here. So our weapon socket. 
So we want to go to our DT items list socket. Well, for our hand socket, weapon socket underscore R. I think that's what it was, a lowercase. Yeah. And then we want to get our hold reference to our item we're holding. Oh, this one right there. I'll use this one. Make a little neater. Get our item details. So this is referring some details to the item we're holding. Bring this down. And we're going to get our socket details. And hand socket R. We can put this up and make it a little smaller. You can actually uh, remove all of these. It just hides the pins on this specific node for any ones we're not using. Oh, yeah, hide all the active pins. <laughs> makes, just makes it a little bit smaller. Easier to slip in there. There. Get rid of that. Um, that's okay for now. This is an example of setting something else from there. I don't think there's anything else right now that I can see offhand. Okay, don't there's no sock for that created. Okay, so that should be it for the item that data tables video. I hope you learned a bit and I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or join my discord. I'll leave the link below in the description. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to get more. I'll continue on with this series. I'll also be releasing a Trillo link in the f every video following this one and i'll also be releasing the link in my discord so feel free to stop by and have a chat thank you have a good day